Do you hear that shaking? That does not sound right. Anyway, we'll get to that. Hello and welcome to another mini PC review. Today we're looking at the B-Link SCR5 Pro Edition. Instead of the 5500U and the standard SCR5, we get the 5800H instead. So it'll be interesting to see how much performance gain there is based on that one difference alone. Taking a look inside the box, you get a user manual, some foam protection, and the PC itself. Covered in some plastic. You hear that rattle? Well, let me put it up against the microphone. That doesn't sound good, so I'm interested to see what that will be. But yeah, I'll put that to the side. And in the accessories box, you are given mounting hardware. The DC power brick. Two HDMIs, one long, one short. And then your mains power plug and some screws. Taking a look around, it looks exactly the same as the SER5. So on the front, you've got the clear CMOS button, two USB 3.2s in type A format, a USB 4 in type C, and the headphone jack, and a power button. Nice click to it. On the side, you've got some vents. Do you hear that shaking? That does not sound right. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, gigabit LAN, USB 3.2A again, and uh, USB 2. HDMI, two HDMIs this time. That's interesting. On the SCR5, you get HDMI and display port um, and the DC power slot. So let's take it apart. Okay, now pulling the red tab. You've got to be careful because there's probably a ribbon on the other side. Interesting. Wow, this looks completely different from the SER5. So instead of like a bracketing system before, you can literally just slide it in there. So let's try that out. Yeah, can't really get easier than that, can you? And there's nowhere to connect it to. But Cool, no, I like that. That makes things a lot easier. It's interesting how they give you the slot for the SSD oh, upside down, like that, but directly under it, it says, please do not block the fan. So <laughs> I don't know whether they're saying just to not bother using this. I'm not really sure, but you can't not block it with one of these. So looks like there are five screws that we're going to have to unscrew if you ignore these two because it's attached to this plate. But there's one here and then one in each corner. And that one is suspiciously missing, which I guess is that rattling noise that we can hear. But let's take the screws out, have a look, and see what we can find. As you can see, it's connected by a ribbon and a cable, so do be careful when you're doing this process. Now, if you look closely, we can see the copper of that rattling, that screw I was talking about, it was right there. Now, when you're reassembling, do be careful because those four screws at each corner were different lengths. So it looks like you have two shorts and two long ones opposing each other. Looks like another set of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. And the NVMe they give you, they give you a very nice thermal pad, very nice and long. So that's good of them. But let's take a look underneath and see what it actually is. Interesting, it's not the same as the one that they give you in the standard SER5. This one is actually a Kingston model. 
So here's a nice close-up for you. PCIe Gen 4 again. In Geekbench 6, we get a score of 1851 and 7485. So overall, it's about the same as a Ryzen 5 5600G. Not bad at all. For the graphics, we get a score of 16429. So around about the same as a 1050, a little bit less. Uh, here's a 3070 for comparison. For Time Spy, we get a score of 1620, which isn't bad at all. Pretty good. Let's get on to some games. As you may have already guessed, SSX3 is up first, and I managed to get it up to four times native resolution, which is around 1440p. And it runs so smooth, so buttery. Really, really impressed with this thing. Same story with Ballistic NG, pretty easy to run game, but it's so silky smooth. Look at those 1% lows, 65.1 FPS. Battle bit up next, and we averaged 80.4 FPS, which is very respectable. As you can see, a 1% low of 52.7, which, I mean, realistically, you're never really going to notice that. Overall, very good experience. I'm impressed with it. Uh, silky smooth. Doomatel up next with an average of 54.6. This thing is so close to hitting that constant 60. So, so close. Not quite there. And finally, PUBG. This is the real test with this horrifically unoptimized game that is six years old and somehow still runs like absolute ass on every PC I've ever owned. We averaged 37.7 at 1080p lower settings, which is okay. Technically, this is classed as playable, but I wouldn't call this eSports ready. If your friend's begging you to play it, you'll survive. Probably not literally in the game, but you can make do with it. But if you want to go pro, stay way clear. So overall, what do I think of the SER5 Pro? I really like it. It's super small, very, very compact, very lightweight. It's also incredibly quiet. I feel like it's normal to see really compact mini PCs to just be the loudest thing you've ever heard in your life. But with this one, even under load, it is really quiet. Just like the SER5, like, I, I don't really know how B-Link is doing it. It's so, so quiet. This thing also sips power, it idles at 8 watts, which is nothing. Under load it's 48 watts and the maximum I got out of it is 55.9. And this thing could definitely replace your full-time big system if you're not dependent on playing games or video editing or anything like that. To be on par with a 5600G is very impressive, like that's a capable desktop grade chip. However, one thing that concerned me is the quality control, like to find a screw just inside the system rattling around is not a good sign. I mean, I imagine it's a one-off, but 95% of people aren't comfortable with completely disassembling their computers. And for the average consumer, this is probably a big enough reason to completely send it back and buy something else. So for the computer enthusiasts like you and me, I, I mean, I don't really care that much. But for normal people, mm -hmm, I don't know. And if you'd like to pick up an SCR5 Pro, just check my description. I've got an affiliate link for you, of course. Uh, if there are any systems that you want me to review, please do leave a comment so I can pick one up and do a video on it. I'll see you in the next one.